Greetings and salutations, loyal viewers of this channel. My name is Sean, and today we are going to talk about Lily Singh. And the reason we're going to talk about her is because she recently dropped a TED Talk, or TED women dropped a TED Talk of her, where she complains and talks about how she is the greatest victim in the history of victimhood. Feel really bad for Lily Singh because she's a millionaire, but she's also a perpetual victim, and you should be definitely sad for her because she's a bisexual woman of color. Did I forget to mention bisexual woman of color? You better clap for the bisexual woman of color. Now, we're going to get into this, but before we get into it, I want to say thank you to everybody signed up over at actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. I will give me the money. Give you, give me the money, okay? Thank you to my podcast listeners, Spotify, Apple, and Google's podcasting platform. Also, I want to thank Lauren Jen for covering this on her media channel because without her, I wouldn't have heard Lily Singh would have got canceled and I would not have been directed to this amazing TEDx talk, which explains every single problem and why her show got canceled. So when I was born on September 26, 1988, my grandparents and great-grandparents back in India didn't find out for two weeks which is a shame because, I mean, look how perfect I was. <laughs> and it's not because the phone lines were down or because they weren't available. It's because there was a complication with my birth. And that complication was being assigned female at birth. So the video opens up with Lily Singh talking about how her grandpa, evil sexist man, he was such an evil sexist that when Lily Singh was in her mother's womb, he said, don't even tell me if my girl's gonna have a granddaughter because that's not even worth anything because you already have a daughter and we're not in favor of women over in India. You see, because my mom had been told that if she gave birth to a daughter, it wasn't worth phoning home about. After all, she'd already given birth to my older sister, and this time everyone had high hopes that she would do right and have a son. Now, I want to make my position 100% clear for those of you in the back. This story is made up. Lily Singh is making something up right now. She is actually going with the argument that she was a victim from the moment of conception, and I don't believe her. And the reason I don't believe her is pretty straightforward. She said she was born in 1988. The sonogram was invented in 1956. Lily Singh was born in Canada. Her parents would have had access to a sonogram. So the idea that her family would need to wait until she was born to know whether or not she was a girl just does not ring true. It rings completely false. Also, she was born a girl, not assigned female at birth, as she said. And that complication was being assigned female at birth. So let us be clear about her woke nonsense in her language and never accept the terminology being put forward by the left. But it gets even more cringe. I taught myself how to write, shoot, and edit my own content. And I worked really hard. When I finally got the hang of it, I committed to posting two comedy videos a week. And I found success. With a backward snapback on my head, I gave my take on relationships, pop culture, taboo subjects, and most popularly, dressed up like my parents. So look, I gotta give credit where credit is due. Lily Singh built up a successful YouTube channel. That is a fact. Nobody can take it away from her and nobody should take it away from her. But as you can see, based on the clips that they're showing during the course of her TED Talk, she did so by doing the, oh, parents are so crazy kind of content which is expected because she started out back in 2010, and this is the kind of content that tends to be popular on newer platforms. This is the stuff that little kids like to laugh at, so this popularity, although it was the thing that allowed her to get that late-night show, basically assured us that Lily Singh's late night show would not be successful because A, she's not a comedian, B, her show was at 1.30, and C, her audience is clearly and obviously children in and around the age of 8 to 13. That's who's being entertained by Lily Singh dressing up like her parents. Let's be honest about it. Now, fast forward to 2015, and I'm on stage in India announcing my first world tour. As fate would have it, the day after this monumental milestone, I was set to fly to Punjab, India, to visit my grandfather for the first time in my adult life. Walked up to him, he walked up to me, he looked me right in the eyes, and he raised his hand and decorated me with a flower garland, a gesture fit for people of importance. He then proceeded to welcome me into his home, my mom by my side, 
and proceeded to show me all the newspaper clippings he had saved with my name and face on them. Now look, I will say, even though I don't believe the intro to her story, I don't believe it at all, she made it up, Lily saying, you're not a victim from the moment of conception, get over yourself. I do believe that when she saw her grandfather, he actually had a bunch of newspaper clippings of her being a success. This is something that grandparents actually do. And by the way, I'm not saying that India isn't a sexist place. India as a country has actually been rated many a different years as the worst place for women on planet Earth, which is actually an amazing achievement considering that nations like Saudi Arabia exist. But I just don't believe the premise of her story because it flies in the face of all logic, but this part seems reasonable, except for the fact that she says this. He said the words, he was wrong. Words I had never heard a man say before to me. Lily, again, you're lying. You're exaggerating. You're making things up in order to make yourself sound like a bigger victim than you actually are. You did not in any way, shape, or form have to wait until your mid-20s to hear a man say he was wrong. He said the words, he was wrong. Words I had never heard a man say before to me. It's always amazing to me how these people can spout out such absurd premises and pretend like they're not the most ridiculous thing you ever heard. But Lily Singh, without flinching, delivers this line to a crowd of buffoons, I guess, and they just accept it. You know, a lot of my male mentors make comments and posts about box office numbers and salaries and titles and those dollar dollar bills. So I thought, let's chime in here. I learned very quickly that whenever I spoke of money, people got a little uncomfortable. Like the time I pointed out the gender gap in the Forbes list for online creators. So Lily Singh says after her grandfather approved of her, even though he rejected her from the moment she was born because evil sexism, she decided because men were talking about box office and money that she was going to chime in. But men were so uncomfortable. Why? Because Lily Singh's a bisexual woman of color. And let's look at her tweet to show us how stupid it actually is. Two years ago, it was almost even between male and female. Last year, it was just me, and this year, there are no females at all. Something I predicted in my Instagram caption last year. I'm concerned the digital space is going to repeat the same mistakes of ancient industries. Hope I'm wrong. So Lily Singh was very upset that the top 10 YouTube earners were all men during the year of 2018. The year before, it was all men but her. And then the year before that, apparently, according to her, it was nearly even. I remember wanting to start a critical conversation because I saw this article and I was heartbroken. You know, the digital space had always been a place that I thought was without gatekeepers, and here it was looking just like old Hollywood. Well, here's the thing. Lily basically stopped making content on her channel and was surprised that she got bumped off the list. Now, she was already successful. She was already a multimillionaire, but this had to do with people who were making their money directly from YouTube. A lot of these people had additional businesses apart from YouTube, so even though PewDiePie was at the top of the list with the most views back in 2018 and the most subscribers in reality there were other people who were probably making a lot more money than him but Lily Singh had to complain because oh my god the women's who are becoming multi multi-millionaires are not generating the same level of views as these other content creators on the list and by the way you can look at these other content creators on the list. You can compare their content output, their content quality to Lily Singh, and you will see beyond any shadow of a doubt that these people deserved it more than her. Remember, YouTube is watched by the audience. That's what dictates your ad rates and your ad revenue. And even though people like Lily Singh advocate for demonetization, advocate for censorship, advocate for pulling the ladder up behind her, in reality, the audience is still in control to a large extent from who is successful versus who is not successful. So yeah, her complaining about this, declaring it sexism, when she basically stopped working and expected the same results and the same acknowledgement, really goes to show us that Lily Singh is self-centered, a brat, and obviously wants stuff that she hasn't earned. And by the way, just look at her crappy content where she's dressed up like her dad with the stupid chest hair painted on her and compare that to what Mr. Beast is doing. These elaborate set pieces where he gives away a ton of money and all of that successful business person and all of that. And you can see the gap has widened because the talent pool has increased dramatically on the male side. And 
that's not necessarily true on the female side. That being said, a lot of women have their own side businesses. No people make more money, in my opinion, than the makeup people on YouTube, and that is largely women. Some gays men's in there as well, but this is because they can sell products in such a way that even if their views aren't what other people's views are, they could still generate that income. You know, the digital space had always been a place that I thought was without gatekeepers, and here it was looking just like old Hollywood. Yeah, it was without gatekeepers, and talent rose to the top. You were not in that talent pool. You had generated a bunch of money and a bunch of views back on older YouTube, but as it became a more sophisticated platform, as production value became more valued, as people started putting more into their content while you were pulling back, they became more successful than you. So again, the fact that those people happen to be disproportionately white, oh my God, how horrible, how terrible says nothing about them or about YouTube as a platform and everything about all the creators who were not anywhere near as successful as them. And by the way, Lily Singh was still incredibly successful at this time. She was complaining a la the same way that Jennifer Lawrence was complaining about pay gaps as she was raking in millions of dollars. In 2019, I made history with my late night show, A Little Late with Lily Singh. Thank you, thank you. There I was, Lily, the baby born a brown girl, rubbing elbows, or at least time slots, with comedy royalty. And I got to give a huge shout out to NBC for boldly trying to break late night tradition. So now she moves on to her NBC show. And remember, Lily Singh's NBC show started in 2019. That was after the year where she basically stopped making content and she was complaining and whining about people who were still making content becoming more successful than her because they were still making content. And she talks about how, oh my God, bisexual woman of color was in every headline. I remember when the show came out, I remember all the articles because they looked practically identical. Bisexual woman of color gets late night show. I almost legally changed my name to bisexual woman of color because that's what people called me so often. So I just want to point out that that joke right there about how I was going to legally change my name to bisexual woman of color really goes to show you how Lily Singh has no comedic talent, no creativity, and never delivers anything new and or value. Because I kid you not, first episode of her first show, she made the exact same joke. Here you go. Look, I get it, okay? I'm not your traditional talk show host. I mean, the media has mentioned I'm a bisexual woman of color so much that I feel like I should just change my name. <laughs> a little long, but it has a nice ring to it. And notice, by the way, that her delivery is absolutely horrible. This is one of the reasons why you probably shouldn't bring somebody on stage who is not a comedian to do a late night comedy show. Now, unfortunately, the budget wasn't based on the importance or significance or historic nature of the show. It was based on the 1.30 a.m. time slot that we had. So right there, that's actually the most important part of this TED Talk. All of this video has been building up to this moment. If you need to replay it, definitely replay it because what Lily Singh is saying right there is that she did not like the fact that she was treated equally. Let me play it again for you so you can hear it. Now, unfortunately, the budget wasn't based on the importance or significance or historic nature of the show. It was based on the 1.30 a.m. time slot that we had. So according to her, it was a problem that she got the budget according to her time slot for her new show rather than a budget that was in line with the historical nature of a bisexual woman of color being the host of a late night show. So essentially, she wanted special privileges from NBC in order to do her show. Also... Let's talk about what she said about the writers. So to say the budget was small, the writing staff even smaller, and to do the first season, I had to shoot 96 episodes of late night television in three months. So who was right? To put that into perspective, that is shooting two to three episodes a day versus the network standard of one a day, maybe two on Thursday. We did it all with a writing staff of about half a dozen writers, versus the network standard, that's about double that. Look, I hate to break it to you, Lily Singh, but when you're in your first season of your show and you have nothing to show that you are deserving of this and it's a test show for you, you don't get the full group of writers that an experienced show that actually brings in audience and attention actually get. 
But what you decided to do with your budget for writers is probably more indicative of your failure than anything else. And by the way, she opened her show with a rap song where she talked about in the opening line how she wasn't a white man. However, that's not the most important thing that she stated in this show because she also had this line about the writing staff. Yeah, so Lily Singh, with a limited pool of writers, decided to make sure over half of them were women and her writing room looked like the United Nations. So again, she, with a limited budget, a limited pool of writers, decided not to go for talent, not to go for comedic writing ability, but to go for diversity. And this is one of the reasons why her show was absolutely terrible. And by the way, she had no diversity of thought on her writing staff. Her entire writing staff was woke Horrible writers, just like Lily Singh, in terms of politics, that actually brought nothing new to the table. All she was, was a Indian version of the wokest, worst late-night comedy shows that you could possibly imagine. And in the very first episode, in her very opening monologue, she insulted Middle America for being evil white racists because they're from Middle America, therefore they're evil white racists. But I know for sure some people at home are looking at their TVs just like, is something wrong with my TV? Why are they playing Slumdog Millionaire after Seth Meyers? <laughs> hey, Middle America, I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, I'm sorry, Lily, but when you're introducing yourself to the general audience and you insult people in flyover country because you don't think that they're worth anything, you think that they're automatically racist, you're essentially shrinking your potential audience pool, which was already incredibly limited because people technically want to see a comedian host a late night comedy show and your show in particular has an audience base that they were trying to bring in from YouTube that happened to be asleep at nine o'clock because they were little baby children. So to say the budget was small, the writing staff even smaller, and to do the first season, I had to shoot 96 episodes of late night television in three months. Who was right? Now, she also complains about her episode load because she had to shoot all her episodes within 90 days. But again, if you have a lower budget, if you're being tested out at late night, and if, according to Lily Singh, you're not going to talk about something topical as per your first sketch. Okay, we want to get crazy. We want to get local, something no one's ever seen before. So we're thinking opening monologue where you cover headlines. News of the week, presidential <laughs> tweet. That's, that's not really my style, you know? I was thinking I could actually share my perspective, especially being a woman and all. Now, I think we can all agree that the beauty and magic of late night is its timeliness. Now, you know that no matter what's happening in the world, you can turn on late night television and hear all about it. But when you shoot 96 episodes in three months, you kind of lose that magic. I was the only show talking about hooking up, partying, cuddling, traveling in front of a live audience during a literal global pandemic. You should be prepared for this. You should be prepared to make the most entertaining show based on the parameters that you're given. But guess what? Lily Singh complains about the format that she was cheering about in her opening sketch. Now, still, I thought, if the budget doesn't celebrate the historicness of the show, then the creative can. You know, I can bring some much-needed spice to late night. And sometimes I was successful. Wrong. You were quite literally never successful. There was no funny sketch on your show. You weren't good in your monologues. And you weren't even a good interviewer because you're so self-absorbed that you try to make everything about you. Your guests were terrible. Even though you could get almost anybody, you decided to go for the lamest of the lame. So no, you never once shined in your late night show because you weren't suited for it. You took the job of a more deserving comedian. And by the way, she pretended this whole time like she was like the first woman of color to ever host a show like this when Wanda Sykes actually had a show like this. And Wanda Sykes, unlike Lily Singh, was an actual stand-up comedian, not somebody who made, whoa, parents are wacky sketches on the internet while wearing a stupid fake beard. But other times... I would receive notes like, don't be so loud, don't be so big, don't be so angry, smile more. And my all-time favorite, 
Don't over-index on the South Asian stuff. You know, when you hear about a good show, when you hear about something that is well-made, one of the funnier things in the background are studio notes, because when the product is something good, those studio notes are often quite terrible. There are legendary studio notes from Pirates of the Caribbean, where people in the studio were criticizing absolutely everything about Johnny Depp's performance, even though Johnny Depp's Captain Jack Sparrow, at least for the first couple of movies, was the most energetic, most fun character in those films. But it doesn't have to be something that big that was that successful to have hilarious studio notes. I remember when I saw an interview with one of the guys from Supernatural, and he talked about how the studio Warner Brothers was complaining that the show was too dark and they wanted them to brighten it up. Of course, the show was a horror show, so it was supposed to be dark, but for whatever reason, even though that was completely alien to the premise, the studio wanted a more brightened up, shiny, nicer looking horror series. Absolutely ridiculous, absurd, and hilarious when you look back on the fact that that show had a successful run for 15 years. Not the greatest show ever, but it was on for 15 years. That being said, Lily Singh Studio Notes, perfectly reasonable, perfectly sensible. Being loud is one of the diseases in American comedies. If you don't know, one of the reasons why I prefer a British comedy or some kind of a foreign comedy is because for some reason, people think yelling is a substitute for comedy. So when they tell Lily Singh to not be so loud, the reason they're telling her that is because the show is supposed to be funny and yelling is not a substitute for comedy. The other notes don't be so big. Again, like she was dressing up in these big, ridiculous suits she's taking up way too much space on her show not letting her guests sign so that also led to problems in the way that the show was presented because when you have a guest on a good interviewer knows how to let the guest shine not you or it's not all about you but the thing is telling lily singh that it's not all about her is essentially like telling a fish that it shouldn't be swimming she can't compute that information and the final thing where they say don't emphasize the South Asian stuff should be obvious. Lily, we don't care that you're Indian. And the idea that you're trying to say that you're this amazing super victim as somebody who is incredibly successful on YouTube because you happen to be a brown and that brown happens to be Indian makes no sense at all and is ridiculous and absurd in every possible way. But I get it because it's also tough for you. Listen. I understand that for some people, <clears throat> white people, <laughs> seeing someone like me host a show is terrifying. The most successful demographic in the United States, in the United Kingdom, and in Canada, where Lily Singh is originally from, happen to be people of Indian descent. They are the most successful, make no mistake about it. And in fact, in American corporations, Indian CEOs disproportionate to their level of the population from within this country, and that is especially true in the tech sector. Now, that doesn't mean that they were handed these opportunities like Lily Singh was. It means that they earned it. We have a lot of people who are well-educated, who emphasize education culturally in the United Kingdom, in Canada, and in the United States, and the cream rises to the top in that regard. But Lily Singh plays the oppression card, even though, again, she's been insanely successful, and so have Indians in three major Western English-speaking countries. Because for the first time in history, we had a woman, not to mention half South Asian woman, become vice president of the United States. Now, we witnessed one of the greatest protests in human history with the farmer protest in India. And I was excited to finally give my take on these things. But my take was almost never included in topical media news coverage roundups. You know, we still got the same voices, the same perspectives, even though someone and something different was literally in the next time slot. Again, you get why people don't like Lily Singh. All she does is complain and whine about oppression and talk about how, oh my God, her perspective is somehow more valuable because Kamala Harris is the first South Asian, half South Asian person and she's the vice president. Wow, so stunning and brave, so beautiful. Well, at this point in time, Kamala Harris was leaning heavily into the fact that she was half black. That's the reason why she got that slot because Biden said he would pick a woman. The black 
Black Lives Matter riots happened, and she was the highest ranking black woman in all of government in the country, being a California senator, so that's why she got that position. So nobody cared about you trying to say, oh, wow, I have an amazing take about it, and it's not different from any of these other white people, but since I'm South Asian, you gotta come to my time slot and check out how topical my take is. I'm, I'm Lily Singh really appreciate me give me media coverage for free you've already given me this time slot that i didn't earn because i'm not a comedian but i, I want more coverage now overall lily singh's ted talk did not go well i will say that ted actually decided that they were going to block off likes and dislikes completely because you can still see that through the plugin which is probably a solid choice considering the top voted comments under this video which read as follows someone who has sat down with a former president president and a-list hollywood celebrities it's telling us how oppressed she is true my god has any human being ever been more in love with herself next comment lily singh is one of the most insufferable people on the planet her comedy is torture her fake victimhood is so contrived i blush while watching it how can somebody be that deluded? Love how she blames everyone for her mistakes. Her late night TV show was terrible and she wasn't funny. And the pay gap in YouTube is a stupid theory considering we the people choose what to watch. She likes to brag about how successful she is yet complained about every opportunity. Look, those comments are savage and accurate. And again, all of this, this attitude, this perpetual victimization really explains why Lily Singh's show never made it past season two and why it honestly was a gift from NBC for it to make it past season one. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you liked the video, show me by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on my social media, support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about Lily Singh playing the victim yet again. Till next time.